Hi, hello everyone. I'm Sifu Liu. Today I'm coming to Florida. Right? I'm going to visit one of the Muyet school here. Muyet is one of the Yipman long-term students. The instructor I'm going to interview today is Fonton William. He is the owner of this beautiful crop. Hi everyone, I got um, Sifu Fonton William here today. He is the grand student of Muyat. So let's see, you know, um, how did you meet, you know, uh, Muyat? Actually, uh, he came to Tallahassee in 1989. Yes. Uh, I had been training since 1983, and I was so impressed. I then went to visit him that year, and I visited from then on for about 10 years. About 10 years, right? Yeah. So you stayed with him. So you must learn a lot, right? Yeah, I was very fortunate. The first trip, I stayed in the Mogun. And then practically every trip after that, I stayed at his house. Nice one, nice one. new student, they start off with uh, the first section of Selim Tile, mm -hmm. and then in the first class they learn Pak Sao and Punches uh, along with the first section. I see. So we'll show you how we get started. Okay. okay. The Great. student comes to class and they learn the beginning of uh, Selim Tile. In this first class, the primary thing is to make sure they learn how to sink into their horse and begin to isolate the movement of the arms against the shoulders so that they begin to define their center line. As you know, after they play for a while, they learn to slow down the tonsils to kind of create the relaxation in the body that's necessary to uh, integrate the lower structure and the upper structure. Eventually, when the student continues to train, he will feel the movement coming from the ground up through his body, out through his hands. In the beginning, when he first trains, it's mostly just upper body. So it's very interesting to watch the transition of the student from the upper body reference to the connection Again, to the ground doing, uh, Pak Sao. And this concept, we teach the student to begin to pick up the rhythm of the movement. So what happens is when a student first trains, his mindset naturally is here. But as he trains over time, he learns to keep his mind out here. So the person doing the POC, the student punching, is going to try to trick him to make him miss. He changes the rhythm. Because the POC is not just the block. It's also about picking up the rhythm of the opponent. So if you notice, that he is alternating the rhythm without telling the parking person that the rhythm is being alternated. The parking person has to sense the rhythm change and blend with that rhythm change. Okay. okay. So after they get proficient with Pak Sao, they go to Pak Dar. And now they use the feeling of Pak Sao to know that they have the rhythm of their opponent, and that initiates the actual hit. So we do pock on three, we do pock on two, and we do pock dar on one. We do the lopsal. And lopsal is a very important concept because this teaches the concept of replacing hands. The block of the bang sao sets up the Wu Sao to come in and switch hands. Once the blocking position is safe, the Bang Sao comes out, and then the lop, which is the grab, grabs, and then the punch occurs. So the lop and the punch occur together, but you must replace hands first to make it work. And then we go to Dan Chi Sao. And this is the first concept where you learn to stay in contact with your opponent even though they are trying to capture the center line. So you lose the center line, but you stay in contact and recover it when they try to attack you. And then after Dan Chi Sao, we go to Lux Sao, which is the rolling hands. In the beginning, there is a little pressure at the top to sense the opponent. So you're training your mind to pick up the opponent. 
in the end, when you go back, you won't see that anymore. It's in the body of the students when they train. After they roll for a few weeks, they start work, uh, working on when the energy is not coming forward and releasing it and coming back to the center. Toy Ma, which is pushing the horse. So many students, when they start, they're still top heavy. So when you start pushing the horse, they naturally to absorb the energy, have to begin to sink down. So they learn to sink and absorb, okay? So then after Toy Ma, we now begin to do Chisao. Mm -hmm. And when we start our Chisao, one student has to become the si hang if it's not naturally in place, and one student is the si dai. And so the beginning of chi sao, one person just does technique, and the other person has to learn to listen to how the technique is coming in. He has to learn to incorporate his block into how the person wants to hit them. That's how it happens. So then after he feels how the block is coming in, he then reference the blocking motion that's associated with that movement and he enhances it to make it fully developed. And that's the nature of how the energy is developed in the hands. So in our class, it's very little free form chi sao. It's drilling feeling and energy over and over and over again. One of the most important aspects is when you watch what's going on here, it looks like they're just rolling like this. But what's happening is there is a sensing of energy at the top every time to see what's going on. So even though it looks like this, it's not this, which is very uh, not focusing on the center. There is a sense of the center line on each roll. And you're tuning into what that person is doing, which tells you what you are capable of doing. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, it's just constant development. They go through the forms, Silam Tao, Chum Kyo, Bil Ji, and then they go to the Jiang. I see. Okay. Right. That's great. Yeah, great. Thanks for your explanation today. You know, I think we learned a lot today. Okay. Sure. So